Hey guys, welcome to Delaney Studios online lessons. So today we're doing a rearing horse, which is week 10 from term one. So that would have been our last week of term one. So we're going to do a drawing mixed in with some watercolor. If you do not have watercolor at home, it doesn't matter. You can do it with colored pencil or textures. Okay, new sheet of paper. Just make sure that you have the following tools with you. So we have a normal rubber, we have a kneadable rubber or a piece of um, blue tack works as well. You have a 2B pencil, a 4B pencil and a 6B pencil. So there's my three pencils. You can also use a mechanical pencil. That's this one here, it's like a pacer. This one has 2B lead in it. Okay, so if you see me using this one, it's just 2B. I've got a couple of brushes to choose from for my watercolour and I also have a smudging stick or paper stump. When they're new, they're beautiful and white like this. So my one's a well used one and it's for spreading out your uh, shadows. So I have all my tools here. All we need to do is start with a 2B pencil. So you can move everything aside. I'm going to use my mechanical pencil. Make sure you have your page portrait because our horse is tall. And then what you want to do first is always plan. So you want to plan with a top line and a bottom line. Then from here, you want to break it down into shapes. Any animal that has head, chest and hips is going to be made up of circles. What I'd like to do first is actually give myself a little bit of a guideline for where the hips are going to sit, just so I have long enough legs. So I'm going to say, about there. So majority of my body is going to sit up high. So what we're going to do now is a circle for the hips. So you don't have to go too big for this one. I always take a couple of goes to get the right shape. Rub out what you don't need. That's the hip. Then I'm going to move forward and I'm going to do the chest. I'm leaving a little bit of a gap, not too much. And that's the chest. Now I'm going to do a head circle. Head circles much smaller. Any animal that has a nose that is really far away from the face, like a cow, or a dog, horses, what you're going to do is another circle at the end of the nose. This horse is looking straight ahead, so you just need a small circle. Okay, the next step is to join them all together. Okay, so you're going to start at the top of the head and you're going to do a really lovely curve for that neck until you reach the chest. Then you're going to curve it again and you're going to meet the hip. Then we can start joining the front as well. So starting from the head, curve it inwards this time, out to the chest. And then you have a nice wide chest and then into the hip section. I'm not going right down the bottom. I'm just going to finish it about halfway in the circle. Then what you want to do is join the face. So move the page, not yourself. We're going to dip it down for an eyebrow bone and go to the top of the circle. And then we're joining the bottom of the head circle to the bottom of the nose circle. It's not going to be the finished shape. We're going to change it a little bit because it is a bit more complicated. So what I'd like you to do now, rub out your top line. We don't need it anymore, it's done its job. Then I want you to get rid of all of the lines inside your shape. I'm just gonna pop my lines back in. Can also get rid of the hip guideline. And now we're ready to move on to the legs. So I'm going to start the legs first, the back legs. So it starts with a straight line for that hip. The hip is actually quite straight. So I'm going to straighten up that hip circle and I'm going to curve it inwards. And then I'm going to curve it outwards. 
So this is going to be like a lightning strike. So it comes in again, just off the joints. Now I know I'm not going to run out of room here. So I'm going to get rid of that bottom line because it will actually get in my way. So let's get rid of that. Again, done its job. I know I'm not going to run out of room. Now with the ankle, there's an ankle bone that comes in. So it's almost like an S. And it comes out a little bit. Then this is the hoof, straight line, straight line, bring it back up. So they do all touch. So it's an S, straight line down, straight line across, and a line coming up slightly on an angle. That's the front of the hoof. Now we're just going to curve it towards the ankle and then you're just going to bring it back up again. As you come up, just like our thighs, they're going to get thicker than our ankle. And you curve it right up towards the belly. My horse is really skinny at this point. I'm going to widen him out in a bit. So let's get rid of any rest of that bit of the hip circle. Let's just get rid of that. I'm going to take this opportunity to fix the chest up a bit. It's actually a much wider chest. So come right out and then come in and join it with the thigh. Get rid of your original line. Now we can do our second leg. The second leg is a little easier because you're just doing a mirror copy of what you've already done. Straight line for the hoof and it comes up with the letter S for the ankle and then up we come until we touch the other leg. It doesn't have to be perfect. They are different. They're different shaped hooves too, so don't worry too much. Okay, we've got two legs. Now we're going to move on to the upper legs up in the air. These ones are a little trickier because they're actually curved in. So what you want to do is start in the chest and they actually start a little high up. You think they'd start sort of lower down, but they're actually further up. And the way to start them is a capital L. That is like the elbow almost. Now I'm going to do a curved line coming out of the body and stop. Then I do a curved line coming down. So these are all muscles, it's arm or upper leg, and this one's mid. Then it comes down into a bone bump. So again, it's like that S. That's the top part and that's the lower S. Then the hoof again. So it's the same as the other two. Straight line. This time you can curve it a bit because it is on the side and you think the hooves are curved. Then we just bring it back up. Bone, back up. Nice big curve for a knee. And then curve it till you come into the body. You can put a little extra little wrinkle in the skin if you'd like to. And then you're going to take your chest line out of the arm because the arm is in the front. So you shouldn't be able to see the chest. So get rid of that line. Then from here, you can do the second arm. So that one comes from the belly and touches the first one. Then the knee starts from the first knee. So curve it out and then just copy the same lines again. I always like to put a little gap there because it actually does separate the uh, little ankles out. If you left that, it just looks like it has one ginormous thick leg. So I do like to include that line in. From here, we can move on to start fixing the face up. So we have a really lovely strong jaw line. It's like the letter U really stretched out. So that's what you want to get in first. So I'm going to bring it bigger than the actual face because it's not quite wide enough. Then get rid of your original line inside that. 
and don't need it. The next thing is we have a little curve for under the chin. So a little curve, here's a close up view. Here's a close up of the chin. So it's a little curve. Then we can come into creating a mouth. So we're going to curve it up and in. Now we've got the front of the mouth and that's going to come out a bit further. And we've got a little lump for a nostril. So we've got a little bump there. Again, I'll show you a close up. Extra bump. And you can rub out this original curve. We don't need it anymore. You can also do a nostril on the other side. The nostril is like a comma. It's a circle with a little tail. Then you can do a bracket next to it to make it look like the actual side of a nostril. The eye is nice and straightforward. The eye is a sideways V. Then you fill it with a curve and you can draw an extra circle inside to make it look like a shine. You can color the rest in and that's the eye. Okay, the next step is to do the ears. So the the ears are like a leaf shape and they always start inside the head. So I'm going to curve it up and curve it back. Again, I'm going to get rid of that line inside the ear because it's not see-through. So you do just want it to be a solid shape. Then you're going to do a line through the ear to create an inside and an outside of the ear. From here, it's a little bit tricky to do the second ear unless we have the mane in. So that's the next thing we can add. The mane starts at the top of the head and touches the ear. Once you've got that line in, you can do a skinny little triangle pointing forward. I'll show you a close up. Then from here, we can start adding the mane in. So you can decide if you'd like it to have some waves in it or curls. Just a few lines. We're going to fill it more with um, like a 4 or 6B later, depending on how dark you'd like it to be. Then I'm also going to do the tail. Tail starts from the hip and comes out. And then there's a couple of little curved lines coming out of it as well. Not all lines have to come from the tail. You can add some just at the bottom. Okay, that's all the 2B done. So now you can move on and we can go up to our 4B. So that's my 4B pencil I've got. If you don't have a 4B, it's totally fine. You can just keep using your 2B. Just press a little bit harder with this one. So we're going to create some shading. So I'm just going to hold my pencil right near the end. So that's why you get less pressure and then you don't press so hard with your pencil. You need it to be really soft because we're going to smudge this later. And if you press too hard, it's almost impossible to smudge it. So I'm not colouring everything, just colouring little sections. I'm going to smudge it all. In the face, around the eye, a bit of shading there, colour in the ear. This is all still with 4B. If 
a little bit of colouring on that ear, under the chin and all at the end of the nose. Now we can come into the legs. So the legs pretty much use the underneath as a guide, underneath each leg and around the knees. You can leave a little gap and around any joints. Back of the hooves. Lots of shadow on this back leg. Again, not all of it's coloured in. Then with your 4B, if you just want a medium tone for a mane, you're just going to put a couple of extra lines in that mane. I'll show you how to pull out some highlights in hair too to make it look a bit more realistic. Okay, that's 4B done. So now we're going to move up to smudging. So I've got my smudging stick here. We're going to smudge everything. So everything that is the horse is smudged. The only thing that's not smudged is literally the background. So what you want to do is hold your smudging stick under your hand. So if you have trouble doing that, you can just put it in your hand and then hold on to it. Have one finger at the end. If you don't have a smudging stick, you can totally use a tissue. That's another really good alternative. I do tend to do swirling motions just in the larger areas. That way you don't get stripes. Let's get a nice smooth tone up the ears, smudge those around the face. Doesn't matter if you go over the eye because you can always pick out those highlights using your um, kneadable rubber or blue tack. If you don't have a kneadable rubber, blue tack works just as well. Smudge down the legs. Don't worry if you get it outside of the lines, it doesn't matter at all. We'll come back in and outline it and clean it up. And in the tail. For smaller areas, I do tend to hold the smudging stick like a normal pencil because it's easier to control. Big areas are fine to hold it underneath your palm. Okay, now we get to do some highlighting. So highlighting is done with your kneadable rubber. So it's a squishy, stretchy rubber. And what you wanna do is just pinch it into something easy to hold, something sort of that shape. And then what we're gonna do is start picking out some highlights. We have highlights around the head. I'm gonna do it on the top of the head. So little wiping motions, top of the nose. We also have a highlight around the cheek, just under the eye. So you can pick out a little bit of that. Dotting also works with um, kneadable rubbers. In this instant, I'm just gonna use a wiping motion. A little bit under the chin, some on the neck. A bit of highlight there, a little bit of highlight at the front of the chest. We'll soften these highlights up as well because they're pretty harsh. Highlight under the belly and a little one next to the belly. And you do a highlight on the back of the body. Again, I'm keep pinching and molding it into a new section because it does get really dark. You can see that original darkness. So just keep folding it and pinching it into a new area. Then we've got a highlight at the front of this thigh. We'll continue it down on the front of the leg, front of the lower leg, front of the hoof. And you're going to do the same thing again on this one. A little bit of highlight on that knee, down the front of the leg, front of the hoof can also use this time to get rid of any smudgy bits that you got on the outside, clean those up. Doesn't matter too much because um, we will be doing the watercolour in the background. Now we're going to do the front legs. 
So highlight on top of the legs this time, inside the knee, front of the leg, little joint, front of the hoof. Second one, knee, front of the leg, little ball joint, front of the hoof. So if you're like, oh gosh, I think these um, highlights are a little bit too severe, you can just get your smudging stick and just lightly go over the edges of them. And it sort of softens it up a bit so it doesn't look as harsh. And that's the 4B done. So we're gonna move up to 6B now, I've got my 6B pencil here. Then what you wanna do is outline everything. You want it to stand out a little more. Can also do a little hoof line on each foot. Everything that you drew in 2B, you're gonna go over with 6B. The reason why I didn't use 6B first is it's really hard to rub out. So best to have it all planned in your 2B pencil, which makes it really easy to rub out. Little hoof lines as well. Up into the face. Big U for the jaw chin, mouth, top of the head, can go over the ears, the nostril, nostril line, the eye, V shape, leave a little gap for a shine. And then you also want to bring in some extra lines, just a few into the tail, you don't want to do too many. And then a few into the mane, just to bring out a few extra little shadow areas, just like that. You can give it a little smudge to soften that off if you feel like it's a little too dark. Now with the hair, what you can do is use your kneadable rubber or even your normal rubber. If you've got a normal rubber, it works really well. What I'm gonna do is just take a couple of lines down out of my tail. So you're getting highlights and you're getting shadows. And however many you think. Don't want to rub out too much. Just a few. So you can see some highlights in the tail and a few highlights in the main. So from here, we can start to do some watercolor. So I'm gonna get rid of all my little rubbings out, move all my pencils away, don't need those anymore. And I'm gonna bring out my watercolors. You can try a couple of different watercolor ways or options of color. Here's another option. So I did greens and blues. Today, I'm going to do some purples and some mulberry tones. So I'm gonna use my slightly bigger brush. This brush is a size 12 and it is a round tip brush. So you can use square tips, that's these, that are just cut across. They're okay to use. I prefer the rounded tip because you do have that little point. So you can actually use it as a fine brush without even having a really, really tiny brush. It's all about pressure. So these are my Kohenor. Uh, they're, these ones are called Brilliant. Uh, they're really, really bright. They don't look much in the video, but they're actually very, very bright. The other thing I have handy is my paper towel. So what you wanna do, I've got my water pot here as well. What you wanna do is you're going to fill the edges of your background with color. It's gonna be wet on dry. You don't have to wet the area first. You can just work straight on dry paper. So I'm gonna wet my brush. Going to select a color, it's that mulberry tone. Make sure you use plenty of water. Just wanna randomly bring it out. 
sort of wobble my brush a little bit to decide sort of where I want to take the edges. You can flick it into the hair or just do a solid uh, outline. Totally up to you. Might bring that colour down here a little bit too. Then I think I'll turn it into a purple. If you want to make it stronger you just put your brush in the colour for a little bit longer and it gets quite bright. Again these ones are like inks so they're already pretty bright. And there's no sort of solid way to do this you can do it however way you feel is the best way. And again, you can choose any colours you want, whatever colours you have. If you have coloured pencils, you can do with pencils. Did one with pencils the other day, it looked quite nice. You don't have to do everything, so you can just do a portion. This lower section, I think I might do the purple on top of that sort of mulberry slash raspberry sort of colour. You can put salt in the background if you're after like a cool little technique. I'm not going to worry about it today. Got a bit of purple over the top. Let's mix the two, make it interesting. May as well bring different tone on the ground, so let's do a bit of blue. Colours mix, that's fine. And there you have your finished piece. So you don't have to take it right to the edges. Uh, it's more interesting if you have some resting space. So these areas are for your eyes to have a bit of a rest so you can come back in and take it all in. Anyway, that's it. So thanks guys, see you next time.